Well, the city and county building here in Denver, Colorado, in the festive lights as we come inside the Pepsi Center and get set for the second of three meetings between the Edmonton Oilers and the Colorado Avalanche. Let's meet the starting goaltenders. Devin Dubnik makes his 25th start of the season. He is 8-3-1 lifetime against Colorado, his best record against any team in the National Hockey League. And at the other end, well, 25-year-old Simeon Varlamov gave up eight goals on 28 shots in Edmonton on December the 5th, but has allowed just nine goals total in the four games since. We couldn't get the Colorado Avalanche, either the players or the coach, to talk about how much they talked about that game, but you knew <laughs> it was on their minds. It has to be. There's no question about that. When you lose a game 8-2, to two, even if it was a close game up until the third period for the Avalanche, they're going to remember that, and they'll be ready tonight. Right off the hop, an opportunity there for Parento and Landeskog, and it was broken up by Jeff Petrie. He is with the captain, Andrew Ferentz. The top line, as you might expect, starting this hockey game. And it is Hall, Newton, Hopkins, and Everly. Taylor Hall got his fourth career hat trick in that game on December 1st, or December 5th, that was. And he also threw in an assist for a four point night. Gordon, Hemsky, and Smith are on the ice right now. The owners coming off a 3 0 loss in LA on Tuesday. Duchesne with a shot that gets deflected up and comes around to the near side. McKinnon. Is with Duchesne and Ryan O'Reilly. Justin Schultz is playing with Nick Schultz. The only change, Louis, will be the fact that Mark Arcabello is not in the lineup, being replaced by Anton Lander in the middle of that fourth line. Yeah, Arcabello took that big hit from Drew Dowdy on Tuesday night in the game versus Los Angeles. A little bit of a sore ribs for him, so he looks like he'll be okay in a few days, but will miss tonight's game when Anton Lander steps in in replacement of him. Larson and Belloff on the blue line as Gagne throws it towards the middle. Yakupov couldn't get to it. He is with David Perron. David Perron leads this team in goals. He's got 14. Here's Mitchell with a shot in the glove save by Devin Dubnik. As we take a look at the keys to the game, brought to you by the 2013 Ford Super Duty. It's built for it. Oh. Well, for Dallas Aikens and the Edmonton Oilers, it's about getting extended offensive zone play. And when you look at this team, the Avalanche, they have a fast team. We've already seen them come up the ice with speed. For Edmonton, the best way to make them play defense is to make them play in their own zone. So they'll look to do that tonight. For the Avalanche, it's put the power back in the power play. The power play struggled, oh, for 32 in 11 games before one for six last game versus the Dallas Stars. They seem to be doing the right things again, Kevin, the Avalanche on the power play. And they want to make that a weapon once again. They have the second fewest power play goals scored in the league. With 14 on the season. Talked about Anton Lander. He's out there with Luke Gazdick and Ryan Jones. Jones behind the net. Gazdick down low. He's being watched by Tyson Berry. Gazdick fights him off. Puts it behind the net, but Ginnon was tying up Jones. Jones fought through it and gets to the puck. So Gazdick takes a hit there from Tyson Berry. Gets it to Anton Belov with a shot deflected in front. They jam away at it. Varlamov covers it up. Anton Lander was wondering why the whistle blew. We just talked about extended time in the offensive zone for Edmonton. This is exactly it here, Kevin. This is the fourth line out there for their first shift of the game. They get a puck in deep, good cycle down low, good activation here by Beloff to find a seam to come down. He knows he has traffic in front, so he throws it into the feet of Arlamov. And that puck sits there for a little bit afterwards after it bobbles off the blocker down into the skates of Lander, who can't get a handle on it. But good job there by Gennon to block out Jones from looking for that puck. But I like that shift of the fourth line. Anton Lander did not dress the last three games. And this is his sixth game since being called out. Sam Gagne set to take the draw against the Colorado team that is ranked 12th in the league at home. They are 11-5-1. And they've really split it down the middle because they're 22-10-1 overall. Now, pretty even home and road records for the Avalanche. That's for sure, Kevin. Petrie throws it around the boards. Ferris waiting for it on the far side. Gets it for Gagne. Gagne. His pass for Yakupov was cut off. The Avalanche coming off a 3-2 loss against the Dallas Stars in Dallas on Tuesday. These teams played a back-to-back home-and-home. And the Avalanche won the first game here 6-2. Puck right through the crease. And that's off the stick 
of the big man Patrick Bordalo as their fourth line is out there. Yakubov brings it back in. He'll let a shot go that goes wide and comes all the way to the blue line and is brought back in offside by Nick Schultz. Ray Oilers clear. Get a change in is N. Benoit. That puck took a funny hop off the linesman, in fact, and it went right to Dubnik, and he will cover up. You know, when you look at the Avalanche team this year, Kevin, you just talked about their fairly equal home and road records, but over the last 17 games, things have really dropped off for them. The first 16, they were on fire. Uh, they were playing, well, 14-2, and two, but 8-1, just 500 in the last 17 games played. Obviously, the power play is the one for me sticking out 18% in the first 16 games at 10% in the last 17, and we just talked about the struggles they've had with the man advantage. And they're looking to make that a weapon once again. Well, that start for the Avalanche, the first time ever. Patrick yep. Waugh becomes the first coach to get 14 wins out of a team's first 16 games. So not a bad start for a rookie head coach. Not bad at all. And obviously a competitive guy in his playing career. Everybody knows how this guy went to war each and every night. Didn't like anything that got by him. And he has that look on the bench as well with his uh, young team here in Colorado. So a good fit here, I think, to bring Patrick Wan here, who's spent time in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League the last six years, won the Memorial Cup back in 2006 with Quebec. So he was ready. His team currently third in the Central Division. Duchesne, nice move, and a shot stopped by Dumnik, and then the rebound is put over top of the net. Matt Duchesne, 15 goals on the season, 28 points. He leads his team in that department. Ryan O'Reilly on the near side, trying to feather it back to the point. He does to Nate Ginnett, moves to the middle, gives it to Duchesne. Duchesne being watched by Nick Schultz, spins him off. Here's Duchesne with a shot. That was stopped by Justin Schultz. The puck sits there, and it's cleared away by Nick Schultz. He'll get it to Alish Hemsky. Alish Hemsky backhands it in. Well, Matt Duchesne, Louis, uh... I wonder if uh, he might possibly be on the Olympic team. He certainly looks early on like he's still auditioning for Steve Eiserman. Well, they're keeping a close eye on Matt Duchesne. You know, he started off like gangbusters. He slowed down a little bit, but he's since picked his game back up again. He's a competitive guy, has verbally said, listen, I'm trying to make that team, that's for sure. Here's Landis Cog. Landis Cog and a pad save by Devin Dubnik, and then a shot by Hayda rises up into the netting. And Kevin, rightfully so, he should be trying to make the team because he's a dynamic player. And boy, when he ratchets it up, he can do things like this. He's one of the fastest guys in the National Hockey League. and has moves like that. He will turn you inside out if you watch the puck on him. And a great save by Dubnik. And then in front, a good job by Schultz to get the stick in there and dig away the rebound and not allow a good opportunity. And this is the second opportunity as Schultz gets in front of Duchesne's second opportunity. You go at him too quickly, that little spinorama, he loves to use it. And he's good at it. Landis Cog is shot, is gobbled up there by Devin Dubnik, and he will hang on. Four shots for the Avalanche early here. And the owners have one on Simeon Barlama. And you know, talking with the, the Avalanche players this morning, Landis Cog was saying this is exactly how they started that game December 5th. It was a close game up until the third period where Edmonton took control. But for Landis Cog, he's one of those guys that has also been a little bit of a roller coaster ride this year. Leads by example, wears his emotions on his sleeve. Um, but the last six games have been a little slow for him after playing pretty well the previous six, but you know the way he plays, he's gonna dial it back in and lead by example. He is the youngest captain in the National Hockey League. Jamie McGinn centering pass for Mitchell. John Mitchell back to the point it comes. Benoit will give it to Mitchell. Mitchell throws it in behind the net, the third line out there for the Colorado Avalanche against the third line of the Oilers. McGinn trying to funnel it towards the net, can't do it. Belloff prevented that, now it gets through and it's picked off by Adam Larson. He'll give it to Smith, to Hemsky. Backhanded in, Smith will give chase. Ryan Smith gets there first. Ryan Smith, two years here in a Colorado Avalanche uniform, had 40 goals in his time with the Avs. Chipped out down the ice, the third line wants to change. That was a good little effort there by Ryan Smith, knowing that his line was going for a change. He gets aggressively in on the floor check, allows a full pull of ball, fresh bodies to get on the ice and establish that four check. And it is the fourth line for the owners that's out there now. They had a great shift the last time. Ference was down low. Andrew Ference has three assists. All have come in the last five games. But he'll be in a defensive posture here as Hayda centering pass. Backhand attempt. Hayda followed up as Cleach and a chance, and the goal stick for Devin Dubnik is sitting behind the net. The puck is still alive. Great play by Petrie to get it back to him. So Dubnik's got his stick as play continues. 
Petrie digs it free. Jeff Petrie lugs it out to center. And both teams want to make a change in bringing it back in is Tyson Berry. Barry cutting from the net with a backhand. It goes right through the blue paint. And this dog is there on the other side. He'll play it to EA Parento. Parento tied up by Ference. That allows Nugent Hopkins to play it around the boards for Taylor Hall. Back to Nugent Hopkins. The pass intercepted by Stastny. Stastny. Parento trying to get it back to Stastny. Broken up by Petrie. Everly to Hall. Hall across the blue line. Waits. Trying to get it to Everly. He was tied up there by Eric Johnson. Johnson and Hayda will be the shutdown pair when the top line is on the ice for the Oilers. Paul Stastny digging at it against Justin Schultz. Everly in there to help out, but it is Johnson who comes up with it. Flipped for Stastny, and Schultz broke it up. Nugent Hopkins to Everly. Everly surrounded, gets it to Nugent Hopkins, and a pass back to Justin Schultz didn't work. 12 minutes, 50 seconds to go here in the first period. The owners with one shot, the Avalanche with seven. Yeah, a little too fancy there at the offensive blue line. I know skilled players want to make that perfect play, but you have one shot on net after almost, well, after the first seven minutes of play here for Edmonton. So they're going to have to find ways to generate more chances on Varlamov, get pucks into his feet, establish that presence going to the net. But the big line finally gets a puck into the offensive zone on a cycle. They haven't spent a whole lot of time in Colorado's zone so far in this game. Yakupov comes from behind the net, puts it out in front. Steered aside, but a good job by Beloff to keep that puck in. Perron picks it up at center. Give it a shove there by Duchesne as he crosses the line. He's squeezed off and knocked down by Andre Benoit. Gagne in a battle with O'Reilly. Perron on the turnover, lets the shot go and it goes wide. Beloff keeps it in on the far side for Yakupov. Nail Yakupov being watched by Ryan O'Reilly. Perron fights through the check of Benoit to get to the puck, puts it in the corner, and those two continue to battle. And now here's Perron with the puck. Perron to Gagne. Gagne, Yakupov out in front, turns, throws it to him. Just off his skate. A good shift, Louis, for that line. Really good shift and good effort down low. It isn't pretty. You know, the Avalanche right now making it difficult. Alex Hemsky couldn't get that puck to settle down. Ryan Smith, centering pass, gets deflected out to center, picked up there by Petrie. Petrie to Gordon, chips it in, Barlamov stops it up behind the net, he'll play it himself around the glass. Boyd Gordon lets it go back to Petrie, who throws it through traffic, as Smith got knocked down by Nate Ginnon. Boyd Gordon. Ryan Smith, fluky accident for Boyd Gordon. In that game against L.A., he got hit in the eye, but he's none the worse for wear. This perfectly preserved uniform came to us via a generous donation from our champion's wife. Pick your winners today with pools. Boy Gordon, 57.9% in the faceoff circle, fifth in the lead. Gets that draw, and the owner's able to get it to the blue line, but no farther. Devin Dubnik directing traffic. He'll give it to Andrew Ferentz. Rips it around the boards. Petrie waiting for it. Petrie. To Jones. I'll get Jones one on one against Ginnon. Ryan Jones fights him off. Jones, good job to get the puck to Luke Gazdick. Gazdick contained by Cleach as Lander has it now. Tyson Berry. Pass up for Cody McLeod. Tried to chip it by Justin Schultz, but Schultz hustled back and he got it over to Nick. Back to Justin Schultz. Schultz. Across the blue line, Schultz, nice move, but then he got stuffed up by Hayda, and Hayda is one big dude. Yeah, that was a good job by Hayda. Justin Schultz had a head of steam coming down, was looking to make some moves, and for Hayda, just watch the chest and took the body. Six foot four, 237 pounds, the ex oiler Eric Johnson. He's not a shrinking violet by any means. A couple big men back there. Wow, Johnson, six foot four, 232. Belloff lays it off the boards for Hall, but it got by him. And that's going to be icing against the Oilers. If you drive on snow and ice, you don't want all-season tires. You want all-weather tires. Get Nokian's most advanced all-weather tire, the WRG3 at Cal Tire. 
Time to play Safeway's Million Dollar Score and win. If any Oilers player scores five goals in tonight's game, Steve Reichdahl of Edmonton could win $1 million. Shop and swipe at Safeway, and you could be our next lucky winner right here on Sportsnet. Well, Lou, you talked about getting shots on net. The Oilers' last shot was eight minutes and ten seconds ago. Yeah, not good enough. You know, there's no question about that. And I think you have to give some credit to the Avalanche. They played a real stingy period here. They've been in the offensive zone a lot. They've gotten pucks in deep, established that cycle down low. But for Edmonton, they're going to just have to find a way to generate more chances. Benoit's shot is stopped by Dubnik, and he will get the whistle. Rogers Oilers Hockey from the Pepsi Center here in Colorado. Well, we quickly told you about it uh, at the start of the game. The Edmonton Oilers uh, making a trade uh, about an hour and a half prior to taking to the ice against the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, the deal is with Buffalo. Conditional sixth round pick in the 2014 draft for Linus Omark, originally drafted fourth round 1997. Yes, well remembered, uh, especially by Dan Ellis for that spinorama move. It wasn't a shootout that he did his best work. But despite that, he could never quite find a home with the Edmonton Oilers. And despite the great efforts on the part of Craig McTavish, in the end, the trade for Linus got Edmonton peanuts. And we'll see if Linus Omar Louis spend some time in Rochester and see how long it is before he gets up with a big club. Dynamic player, no question about that. Nine minutes left to go in the first period. Another shot on goal, albeit a weak one is the ninth for the Colorado Avalanche. And there's no question that was the game plan coming in for the Avalanche is getting pucks to the net and, and continuing having the good starts to games. As you had mentioned, Kevin, before their loss against Dallas on Tuesday, they hadn't lost a game in regulation or overtime once they scored the first goal of the game. So they're looking to try and do that again, get off to a good start and erase that 8-2 loss December 5th. 35-28 were the shots on goal when these teams hooked up on December 5th. Oilers getting eight goals on those 28 shots. Alex Hemsky in a race for it, and he eliminates the icing as he got there ahead of Nate Ginnon. The Avalanche get possession when they come back with Tyson Berry to Max Talbot. Talbot given a bump there by Justin Schultz, and now Schultz will get the puck back. Schultz being hounded by Talbot. He'll give it to Nick Schultz. Schultz will reverse it. And the Schultz boys play catch. Alex Hemsky. The owners trying to get out of their own zone. Here is Schultz. To Hemsky. To Gagne in the middle. Sam Gagne will lead the rush. Gagne across the blue line. Drop pass for Dale Yakupov. He gets stopped. And the owners will regroup. Belloff to Larson. To Perron. Back to Belloff. Gagne fires it in this time. Getting to it first was Johnson. He is checked there by Yakubov. To Gagne, quickly out to Perron. They shot on Varlamov, and he had to be sharp. And he will reach out and make the save, and then Perron does a little pushing and shoving with McLeod. No surprise there as David Perron getting in the face of the Colorado Avalanche. The owner's second shot almost results in a goal. Well, Kevin, as we talked about the Avalanche and their hot and cold season, the Oilers are no different when you look at the last 14 games and the differences for them in certain departments. I look at the power play once again for them, 30% when they win and 6.5% when they lose in the last 14 games. So obviously the power play, a weapon also for Edmonton as Colorado wants it to be as well. Well, this might just be what the doctor ordered for the Oilers. 7-2-1 in their last 10 against the Colorado Avalanche. And they have won the last four meetings between these two teams and have outscored the Avalanche 22 to 7 in those four meetings. The final matchup will be in April as O'Reilly's shot goes wide. Neil Yakupov plays it off the glass over the stick of Gagne at the end of his shift. The Oilers will go home to play St. Louis on Saturday and then Winnipeg on Tuesday before the Christmas break. We'll have that game for you on Sportsnet. Colorado, meantime, go on the road. They'll be in L.A. on Thursday and in San Jose on Monday. Eric Johnson. Watched by Everly as he gives it to Hayda. Off the glass and out. It gets to the blue line and no further. 
Ryan Nugent Hopkins to Taylor Hall. Taylor Hall hangs on to it, throws it towards the net. Barlamov juggles it. Nugent Hopkins reaching for it. Got knocked down there by Gabriel Landeskog. Hall lost it in the middle to Hayda. And it's picked up now by Paul Stastny. To Landeskog. Gabriel Landeskog moving in. Centered it out in front. Johnson fires a shot that gets deflected wide. Pushed ahead by Nick Schultz. And he gets it out. Stastny one more time. P.A. Parento. Parento. Got tied up there by Schultz. Boy Gordon off the bench. We'll give it to Ryan Smith, and Smith will start away. Smith with Gordon. Wines fires a shot from a sharp angle. Barlamov makes the glove save with Gordon there, and he'll hang on. It's Rogers, Oilers hockey, and it's right here on the net. Anton Lander in the lineup uh, tonight because of an injury to Mark Arcobello. And while he spent most of the season in Oklahoma City, he's really made a name for himself down there with uh, the amount of time that he has spent uh, in the community, uh, spending time with underprivileged, underprivileged kids away from the rink and as well at the rink. And uh, he's also spent some time uh, working for Habitat for Humanity and building homes for those that need them. And now as he plays his sixth game of the season, uh, Lander now also trying to find a home with the Edmonton Oilers. And trying to take advantage of the fact that there's been injuries to the Oilers down the middle. Mark Arcabello out of the lineup after a big hit from Drew Doughty in the game against Los Angeles. Not sure how long he will be out. But, Louis, when you get your opportunity like Lander, you've got to make it work. And so far, that fourth line has had some good shifts in this first period. They really have. And one of the things about Anton Lander, he keeps things simple. He makes the right plays. He puts pucks in good areas where his wingers can go in and get back possession that's exactly what they've done in a couple of shifts they've had here they've gotten in deep they've cycled it down low and actually had a couple good scoring chances here's the top line's turn right now and they're out against the third line for the Colorado Avalanche centered by John Mitchell who is known as the Swiss Army Knife <laughs> by his teammates just for his versatility and I guess that's not a bad thing not a bad thing at all you know for Patrick Waugh loves the way Mitchell plays the game can put him in any situation power play penalty kill up and up and down the lineup column he says I can put him on both wings and maybe even defense so I mean he's done a lot for this avalanche team came and had a real solid year last year with them and has carried that forward and you know a pretty deep team here to have Mitchell on your third line with the way he can play the game rewarded with a two-year 2.1 million dollar contract I'm this guy Goes wide against Petrie. Backhand stopped by Dubnik. Rebound slid wide. Stastny trying to keep it in. Uh, it is moved out. Petrie to Hall. Hall moving in with Everly. There's a shot. Scores. Wow. What a shot by Taylor Hall. It's 1-0 for the Oilers. Boy, he ever fire that, Kevin. He just absolutely unleashes this wrist shot here. Nice little play off the boards to the defensive zone. Little area pass here. You'll see Petrie look up. A little bank off the boards. Taylor Hall with speed. And, I mean, he zinged this. He wrecked, you know, wrecked the water bottle in the back of the net. This was by Varlamov. I don't think the light went on for after a while. They recognized, hey, this was in the net. That's how fast it went in and out. And for Taylor Hall... We talked about the big line, how they've been playing as of late, and he just fired that one home for a 1-0 lead. His fourth goal in four periods against the Colorado Avalanche this year. <laughs> That's a zinger. It beat the speed of light. <laughs> it did. So he's got 13 on the year, and the owners have a 1-0 lead. And Jeff Petrie gets his sixth helper of the season. 14-50, the time of the goal. Colorado doubling up the shots on the orders, but it is the orders who take the lead. The Shane drop pass to McKinnon. That was blocked. Ryan Smith bangs that puck out. Ryan Nugent Hopkins gets the other assist. So Ryan Nugent Hopkins now has 18 helpers on the year. His sixth career assist against the Colorado Avalanche. Well, we talked about the big line off the top. And the big line, two-thirds of it, get points on that goal. Yeah, and Kevin, talking about the big line and with Taylor Hall, one of the big improvements in his game and something that he really looked at when he missed the seven games with an injury was playing defensive hockey. He's all the way back in the defensive zone, chips to Nugent Hopkins, it goes to Petrie, and look at him move his feet to get into an offensive attacking position. 
And again, just absolutely rips this one by Varlama for a one nothing lead. But for Taylor Hall, recognizing the game is 200 feet, and another guy that's vying for that Team Canada position to play for his country. A neat little look off there, too. We had Everly and then just fired it. The Avalanche trying to come back. McLeod with a shot that Devin Dubnik hugged the post, made the save. Three minutes, 50 seconds to go in this period. Bordalo to McLeod. McLeod checked by Belloff. Bordalo against Jones. His fourth line for the Colorado Avalanche putting on a little pressure now. Bordalo behind the net, swings it out in front, and a good defensive play there by Justin Schultz to get, take it away from Mark andre Cliche. Finally, it's flipped down the ice. Jones going after it. Gets tied up there by Ginnon. And that allows Ginnon's D partner, Tyson Berry, to pick it up, and the both teams want to make a change. That was a good shift by the fourth line of the Avalanche. Get a puck in deep, cycle it down low with some big bodies. Here is Mitchell dancing his way in. Great pass, and a great play there by the captain, Ferentz, to block the shot from Jamie McGinn. Yakubov for Gagne. They got tied up by Saric and got knocked down. And Saric lost his glove. Again, waits, waits. Now he'll take a shot. Dubnik the save. The rebound is kicked over the net. And Dubnik just got a blocker on it. Well, you know, the Edmonton Oilers have the one nothing lead right now. There's no question who the better team in this first period has been. And it's been the Avalanche. They have continued to push the issue. Great defensive play here by France on that shot by McGinn that's right from the slot to get in the right position at the last second to block that shot from going through and then again McGinn down the right hand side left handed shot tries to go far side and it's the wobbling puck afterwards off the skate I believe of Talbot that Dubnik has to get that blocker up good recognition by him to stay with that puck after the shot and make the second save they faced 40 shots in his last start December 13th against the Vancouver Canucks that started this road trip for the owners. Trying to salvage two points on this four gamer. Ryan Smith to Boyd Gordon. Boyd Gordon turns, swings it out in front. Larson was down low and he got spun around. Oops. Ryan O'Reilly back the other way. There is Boyd Gordon defensively. Quick up to Hemsky. Alex Hemsky gets a Shot there from Ian Hayda. Hayda. McKinnon just inside the blue line. Off Nugent Hopkins into the corner. Back to the point. Hayda steps into a shot. That was blocked. Another block. This one turned in by Justin Schultz. Hayda will have another chance. Steps into a shot. Up high on Devin Dubnik. The puck falls down and he covers it up. So the owners get on the board with their first goal. We have a winner in our score and win now by swiping a free club card. Jeanette Thorne of Edmonton won the Hoover Wind Tunnel multi-cyclonic bagless canister courtesy of Safeway and Christy Crackers. And the guy that wears number four for the Edmonton Oilers. Taylor Hall's got 13 goals so far this season and 10 goals lifetime in 15 career games against the Avs. Fourteen to five. The shots on goal favor the Avalanche. Yeah, the ice has been tilted in this first twenty, Kevin. A minute forty-six left to go in that first period. Gagne against Stastny, oh. and Gagne just cross-checked Stastny in the face, and a penalty coming up to Sam Gagne. Six attackers out there for the Avalanche. Stastny is up. And in the play is Hayda lets the shot go. Big rebound in front, and there is Stasty. In some difficulty. Yeah, okay. for Sam Gagne, Kevin, you know, battling in the faceoff dot is something he wants to really work on here. And he gets tangled up with Stasty, but he definitely delivers a pretty aggressive cross check that catches Stasty high. So he gets the head in there, comes up, and then right there follows through with the cross check into the face area of Stasty. He goes over and, oops. A little flash of insanity there as I was trying to battle, but with that cage on, you know, he loses his sight, he gets popped in the chin, comes up a little bit feisty, and he's going to head to the box he hopes for two. And so the first power play of this game goes to the Colorado Avalanche. And right now the Avalanche bench not too happy. They want a five-minute major here, at least a, a double minor for high-sticking with blood coming out of the nose of Paul Stastny. And if you look at 
Gagne, that's why he was fired up. He's bleeding, too. He's sitting there saying, hey, I took a shot, too. And, you know, I couldn't really tell him the scrum. But Sam Gagne, we've never really seen him do this in a face-off. So he was obviously fired up coming up out of that scrum. Now, I didn't see what Stasty did in the pile, but definitely brought his head into his chest. And I don't know if the stick came up and caught him first, Kevin. Yeah, take a look here. You see right off. But if you watch Stasty, here he comes there. up and lifts up on Gagne's face. So that's the reaction afterwards to come back on Stastny. And Hey, two wrongs don't make a right, but it is a battle down there in that dot. And now it's a five-minute major to Sam Gagne. So the complaining by the Avalanche bench pays off with a five-minute major. Big opportunity here for them to get back into this game. A power play for the Colorado Avalanche that has struggled mightily over the last 12 games. Just one goal, and it came in their last game against Dallas. They were one for six. A power play ranked 24th in the league goes to work. And as Willie mentioned, five minutes of time to work with. A minute 13 left to go in the period. Johnson at the point being watched by Ryan Jones. Jones is out there with Boyd Gordon, Petrie, and Ferentz. One, 14 power play goals for the Colorado Avalanche. Just six of them at home. The third fewest in the league in your home building. Eric Johnson plays it in behind the net. Ferentz is there. Duchesne centering pass and a quick shot by McKinnon. And that was blocked by Jeff Petrie. 40 seconds left to go in this period. Ryan Smith and Anton Lander are out there. And that puck gets gloved ahead. And we get the whistle. Such an important penalty kill here for Edmonton. But you, you mentioned it, Kevin. The power play of the Avalanche has disappeared a little bit this late into the second half of the first half of the season. That makes any sense at all. But if you look at the first 22 games, they're at 19.7% and only 2.7% in the last 12 games. They went goalless on the power play in 11 of those 12 games, but they did get on the board Tuesday versus Dallas. They were one for six in that game, so they do feel they're making progress and too talented of a team not to have a potent power play. 20 seconds left to go in the period. Sam Gagne out of the game. A five-minute cross-checking major and a game misconduct. 10 seconds. We welcome those fans who've been watching the Calgary Flames and the Detroit Red Wings. Kevin Quinn working alongside Louis DeBrus. At the end of the first period here in Colorado, the owners have the only goal. It's one to nothing. Well, a very dominant period by the Avalanche in regards to shots. 17 to 5, they fired that many more shots on Devin Dubnik. He was up to the task, made all 17 saves. It was Taylor Hall, it was the 13th goal of the year that gives the Oilers a 1-0 lead. Again, defensive hockey, get on the offense quickly, and he just zings this one by Varlamov to make it 1-0. The Avalanche were the better team, Kevin, in that first 20, but Edmonton comes out of it with the advantage 1-0, and now they'll have to kill off still over three minutes of power play. Hockey Central panel is coming up after the break. It's Rogers Oilers Hockey right here on the net. So now, and it will be Alish Hemsky who will join Taylor Hall in the penalty box. But the most important thing are the three guys out on the ice right now. Boyd Gordon along with Andrew Ferentz and Nick Schultz. As the second period gets underway, a five-on-three power play for the next two minutes for the Colorado Avalanche. Tyson Berry is at the point. He'll give it to Duchesne down low. And Parento feeds it across for Stastny, and he hit the post. Paul Stastny to Parento. Landis Cog in front. Duchesne with the puck now. Tyson Berry, the only defenseman, fakes the shot. Berry's got it again through the legs. Duchesne to Parento. Parento to Stastny. Stastny out in front. Landis Cog didn't get a shot away. Parento does. Dubnik makes the save and the rebound. He covers up and gets the whistle. A couple great chances here by the Avalanche. Good puck movement by them, and they're just looking to get one-timers away. I love this little hesitation here by Stastny. As he gets this puck, he allows Dubnik to go down. He's got everything to shoot at. He just hits the bar, but it was a perfect pass by Parento to get it through to him and allow him to take this great chance on net. They retrieve the puck back again and get a second opportunity. Devin Dubnik wisely covers it up. Paul Stastny with two power play goals on the season. A minute 15 left to go in the penalty to Taylor Hall. Tyson Berry will give it to 
Stastny one more time, get it back again, Duchesne. Landis Cog in front, Parento on the far side. Parento, Duchesne hammers the shot, great save by Dubnik. Barry picks up the rebound, he'll give it to Stastny. Stastny, Barry lets it go and scores. Tyson Barry, power play goal. We're tied at one. He beat Dubnik on the glove side for his second goal of the year. This is a great shot by Barry, too. He really teased this one up. A nice shot through the middle. Good save by Devin Dubnik. Eventually, it'll work its way down for Stassi. Sets up the one-timer for Barry. And he just kind of chips this one kind of high. He knows that Dubnik is going to probably come down and cut down the angle, get down into the butterfly position. He puts this one right under the bar. So from the top of the circle, bang, right there over the glove of Dubnik to tie this game 1-1. So a perfect shot by Barry. And still... A power play for the Avalanche. Stastny gets his 12th helper of the season. And we've got a tie game. Matthew Shane now has 14 assists, 29 points. He leads the Colorado Avalanche. 54 seconds still remaining. A power play time for the Colorado Avalanche. And some discussion about that right now. The period is a minute seven old. The penalty clock being reset. So Tyson Berry had an assist against Dallas on Tuesday. He has now got three points in his last three games. And Louie, you were talking to his deep partner, Nate Ginnon, who says, just get on the puck, that kid can fly. <laughs> he really can fly. Ginnon says he just gives him the puck and says, run with it, kid, go. Because he can skate like the wind. They played with his dad, Lenny Berry, in San Antonio down the International Hockey League, former NHL player as well. And he played forward, his son plays defense. And boy, can he ever skate. I don't think he got his wheels from Lenny. <laughs> the 20th shot for the Colorado Avalanche. Has tied this game at one, but we still have a problem with the technical. So they're trying to set it now. This is a brand new score clock here at the Pepsi Center. We were told it's $15 million worth of renovations. You've got to be a computer expert to run that clock. I, now they've got it right. There's 2.25 left to go and the penalty to Sam Gagne being served by Alex Hemsky. So it's five on four now for the next mi two minutes and 25 seconds. Anton Lander and Ryan Jones are up front. It is Ferentz and Petrie on the penalty kill. Here's Lander on the intercept. Anton Lander throws it in front for Jones. Picked up there by Eric Johnson. Johnson goes cross ice. O'Reilly to Deshane off his skate. O'Reilly races after it. Ferentz in there as well, digging for it as it comes back to Johnson at the point, and he cannot handle it. And the Colorado Avalanche will have to regroup. Duchesne drops for McKinnon. McKinnon moving in. Here's McKinnon. Right leg as he jumped over Petrie. Wow. Heads up play by McKinnon, or that could have been dangerous. He has the puck right now. McKinnon down low for Duchesne. Back up top. Here's Johnson's shot. Great save by Dubna. Kicks it aside, and Barry's got it. He'll give it to Johnson. Johnson to Duchesne. Duchesne to the middle, and it's picked off there by Ryan Jones. It sends it all the way down onto Simeon Barlama. Good read there by Ryan Jones to pick that cross-seam pass off and get it down 200 feet, get some fresh legs on the ice. The owner's 17th when it comes to penalty killing in the league, both overall and on the road. Stastny drops it back for Benoit. Benoit will give it to Johnson. Eric Johnson goes cross ice. Here's Stastny down low for Parento. He's got Landeskog with a trigger cocked. Johnson to the middle. And a good hand-eye there by Perron, but the Oilers can't get it out. Johnson tees it up, fires a shot, and that is blocked by Boyd Gordon. Flipped behind the net by Landeskog. Too high. Stastny recovers. He'll get it to Parento. P.A. Parento. Now to Stastny. Up top for Johnson. Fakes it. Now he'll let it go, and that was blocked. This time by Nick Schultz. 35 seconds left to go in the power play. Shot from the point by Benoit. Steered aside by Devin Dubnik. Parento gives it to Landeskog. Landeskog in traffic. And underneath Boyd Gordon, and then flipped down the ice. 
Boy, a couple guys paying the price there on this penalty kill for Evans and blocking some huge shots. Eric Johnson can really tee it up. And Gordon just denied him of one opportunity. And in the front, it was Schultz that blocked another. There is Barry. Time winding down and the man advantage. Landers guy can't keep it in. Ryan Smith trying to get that puck to Lander. Centering pass for Lander. And the penalty is over. Hemsky's out of the penalty box. The owners weather a storm, giving up just one goal. McGinn shoots it in. Waiting for it there is Max Talbot. He is checked by Petrie. Nugent Hopkins to Everly. Picked up by Hall. Taylor Hall racing in. Hall with a wrist shot that goes over top of the net. A little venom on that shot. Oh, yeah. He's got the puck again. Centering pass for Nugent Hopkins. Steered aside. As the top line begins the buzz. Nugent Hopkins to Everly. Everly back to the point. Belloff. Nugent Hopkins down low for Hall. Right out in front for Everly. Good defensive play there by John Mitchell to break up that pass intended for Jordan Everly. Mitchell digging at it. Against Hall. Hall. Trying to get free. Against Sarich. He does manage to get the puck back, but it got by Anton Belloff. Good battle down low, though. I like this response here from the top line of Evanson after getting scored on the five on three, killing the rest of the power play off of the major to Sam Gagne. They come out, get the puck in the offensive zone, and just work off the cycle. Good defending by the Avalanche not to allow them to take it to the net. DeShane checked by Justin Schultz. DeShane carries on. Out in front it comes, and O'Reilly could not get a shot away. Tyson Berry. McKinnon behind the net. He's got DeShane out in front. Nathan McKinnon. Against Justin Schultz out for Duchesne. His shot is stopped and Devin Dubnik covers up and gets the whistle. Canada Post NHL Stamps and Souvenirs. Available at your local post office or online at canadapost.ca slash NHL. Well, we just saw a nice little feed by Nathan McKinnon. A little earlier on here, jumps right over Jeff Petrie, talk about athleticism here. The first overall pick of last year goes over top of the big defender of Edmonton. And then this is some nice little work down low in the last shift. A little button hook, backhand, no looker to Duchesne, who gets a good shot away to Devin Dubin. So McKinnon really showing the skill sets that made him the first overall pick in last year's draft. Ryan Smith cutting for the net. Here's Ryan Smith. A one-handed shot. The net comes off the moorings, and we get a whistle. And driving for the cage was Boyd Gordon, and he took it off. Gets a little tap there from Simeon Barlamo. Yeah, that was a good drive by Ryan Smith, and this is old school style here. Put the shoulder down, put the arm out, and just drive to the net. Took a pretty good check from behind going to the net afterwards. But I like this move from Ryan Smith. Right now, passes aren't getting through. It was Big Bortolo coming back that levels him coming into the blue paint. But that puck did bobble loose afterwards, but the puck. The whistle had blown, sorry, before uh, anybody could follow up on the rebound. Fourth line on the ice right now for both teams, and that means Gazdick and Bordalo on the ice together. Remember their tilt the last time these teams hooked up, a decisive TKO for Luke Gazdick. And you know, they've had a few shifts against one another here, but both of them elected to try and play the game, and the fourth lines have done yeah. pretty well, respectively, for each side here. So we didn't know what was going to happen. We figured they might try and match up again, but these two guys know that they can play, they can bang, they can crash, and most of the fights is you, you see Luke Gazdick get in, and also Patrick Bordelower for a reason. It's not just off the face-off, let's do this. They're banging, they're crashing, and the gloves are coming off. Still lots of game left, though. 13.53 to go in the second period. Belloff, Fadabo moving forward, retreats, and look at Nugent Hopkins. Almost. Stole that puck to create a chance. He does get it back oh. and then hit from behind by Landeskog was Taylor Hall. Or by Hall was hit by Landeskog, my mistake. Play continues. And Hall none the worse for wear. I'll tell you what, that could have been dangerous though. Landeskog with the puck right now. Gabriel Landeskog works it to the blue line and then given a shove there by Belloff. He brought it in offside. Gabriel Landeskog hits Taylor Hall from behind right there. Play continues. We'll be back to the Pepsi Center right after the 
Now it's time to live the game with Windows, and tonight we take a look at WHL.ca and the streaking Edmonton Oil Kings, winners of nine of their last ten games to move into third place the Eastern Conference, two back of Calgary at the Christmas break. Edmonton plays at Calgary December 28th, plays at home December 29th, and my son will have his 11th birthday there, so whether it's birthdays or other things, live the game with Windows. Ryan Nugent Hopkins is taking the place of Sam Gagne right now on that line. So Nugent Hopkins will get extra time in this game. In the absence of Sam Gagne. Icing call coming up, so he's going to have to stay out there. That's a good point, Kevin. You're going to have to shuffle some lines around and try and get different bodies on the ice. Obviously, Dallas Aikens wasn't too happy with that call at the end of the first period that allowed for the five on three against and the goal that tied this game 1-1 but you have to regroup put the players you have at your disposal on the ice so there will be some mixing and matching no question and i think we're going to see a lot of this top line who is starting to get going again in this second period nugent hopkins will take this draw against john mitchell and out there with mcginn and talbot schultz to schultz justin schultz David Perron to Nick Schultz. Schultz across the line, flips it high, and Barlamov took that one like a uh, center fielder. They long on and get the whistle, a little pushing and shoving, and there is David Perron and Jamie McGinn exchanging words. It's been a pretty peaceful game so far. We saw that little bit of a hit from behind, Landeskog on Hall, and now the tensions are starting to rise a little bit here, so both teams getting a little more feisty in the blue paint, and it was McGinn that came in. And bumped into David Perron. Usually it's Perron, but you know what? Anytime he goes into the net, throws a little snow in there, and in his usual place, going into the opposition goaltender. <laughs> Going to bring somebody in there for sure, but that's the way he likes to play the game. That's some really good words yesterday talking about the fact that, you know, it's it's one thing to be in games, but they have to start finding ways to win and get back to work, and you never have to ask him to work this year. He's at a real solid season so far for the Oilers. Leads this team in shots on goal. Came in with over 110 as we take a look at the opportunity for a career year for number 57. Yeah, going to face his old team on Saturday night. You know, for, for David Perron, you know, coming in here, you know, you knew he was a skilled player, but I didn't realize that he played with the tenacity that he plays with. And you look at the points over the last few years, projected 65 on the year. So he's shooting for a career best, certainly in goals. But uh, I just like the way he goes to the blue paint and gets in the grill of oppositions. Deflected by Ryan Smith off the shot of Jeff Petrie. Barlamov covers up and another whistle. Almost got a little bit too much of this puck by Ryan Smith, but planting himself in a familiar place. Good hand-eye coordination. Again, not a hard shot, just one to get through traffic. And for Ryan Smith, so good at deflecting pucks, but he gets a little too much of that big wooden paddle. <laughs> on the puck, and it slows it down enough so for Var Varlamov to make the save. But good chance there on a little tiny shot 76th game against the Colorado Avalanche for number 94 and another shot and this one again handled by Varlamov as all the off. Oilers are into double digits and shots sorry Kevin all off the face off again just a good face off one back and for Petrie just a little wrister ensuring that it gets through you know the Avalanche did a good job in that first period of blocking shot attempts that were made on net but in the second period they're starting to find their way through scramble draw one by the Oilers and Boyd Gordon Alashemsky comes out in front. Puck gets off his stick, but it comes to Ferrin. Throws it through traffic, and this time it's blocked by Cody McLeod. But look at Hemsky right back on it. Pays the price to keep the puck in. Another shot, from this time by Petrie. It was blocked by Tyson Berry. But Alash Hemsky is so good at getting the puck back. Duchesne with a backhand attempt, one-handed. A weak shot handled by Devin Dubnik, and the owners send it down the ice as they want to get a change in. 11.39 to go in the second period. 22-11, the shots on goal in a 1-1 game. That was a smart play by Hamsky, looking for a change himself, but he recognizes that Matt Duchesne is stretching up the ice to look for the quick break, and he stays with him until fresh bodies come on the ice, and then he can change. And those fresh bodies are the top line of Virgin Hopkins, Everly, and Hall. Dubnik gets it to Larson, quickly for Ferentz, intercepted by Parenteau, but look at Nugent Hopkins come back defensively. That quick stick. Got the puck to Ferentz. Hall now. He'll go cross ice. 
Nugent Hopkins picks it up. Delivers to Everly. Everly back to Nugent Hopkins. Being watched by Eric Johnson. Everly carries on. Can't get the shot away. Parento there to block it. Johnson. Moving in himself. Eric Johnson still has it. Eric Johnson to Parento. Parento had it in his skates. He'll play it back to the point. Jan Heda. Plays it behind the net for Parento. Being watched by Bella. Yeah, Parento. The Avalanche want to make a change. And it's kept in by Talbot. Max Talbot. Turns. He is tied up by Nugent Hopkins, but this is exactly what Patrick Waugh wants as the owner's top line hemmed up in their own zone. And there you go. That's a little simple play by Beloff. He's six foot three, takes the body, separates man from puck, and is able to pass the puck up and get it out of harm's way. Quick up for Jamie McGinn. McGinn. Checked by Gazdick and Jones. Schultz to Gazdick. Gazdick. Gains the line, fires it in. Barlamov leaves it there, almost gave it away. Now he did to Lander. Good hustle by Ryan Jones to force that turnover. Back to the point. Schultz playing it off the end boards, looking for Jones. It gets by him. Talbot waits for it, avoids the big hit from Luke Gazdick. Gazdick leaves it there for Jones to Lander behind the net. Lander tied up by Corey Sarich. Gazdick trying to help him out. Got cut off there by Talbot. Talbot. Benoit back to Talbot off the end of his stick. And it's up to Jones now. Ryan Jones brings it back in. He is stopped. The owners want to get that line off, but a quick up now. Here is McGinn. McGinn centering pass. Mitchell shot. What a save by Dubnik. And the puck ends up going off the net. It's Rogers Oilers Hockey, and it's right here on Sports. July 1st, 2007 is when Ryan Smith was one of the uh, last available high price free agents and it was uh, a couple of days later that he had the press conference after signing a six-year deal. Scott Hannon signed at the same time. Now all of this happening for Ryan Smith after he got a call from a certain guy named uh, Joe Sackick. It ended up being that the Smiths lived five houses down from the Sackicks. Uh, Joe and Ryan drove to and from games and practices together and even though Smith had played with him at the Olympics it is during that time that he truly got to know Sackick and realized he was uh, no average joke. Well not with 625 goals and 1016 assists and a Hall of Fame ring. And yeah just one of the all-time greats both on and off the ice. And a guy you could really look up to in his playing career the way he played the game brought his A game each and every night. I didn't like playing against him. <laughs> he was too good. <laughs> Boyd Gordon on that line now with Perron and Yakubov. And it's Yakubov trying to keep it in, but instead it goes to Ginnon with a pass to Duchesne off the end of his stick. Eight minutes, 45 seconds to go in the second period. The owners outshot badly in that first period, 17-5. Things have started to even up. In this second period, it's now 24-11. There's another shot, Nugent Hopkins let it go. Perron, back to the point it comes. Belloff lays it behind the net for Yakupov. Yakupov being watched by Ginnon, centering pass for Perron. Quickly to Nugent Hopkins. Nugent Hopkins against Duchesne, fights him off. Nugent Hopkins still has it. Turn, soft pass to Perron. Trying to get it back again, but it was Tyson Berry who broke that up. He got it to Ryan O'Reilly. Berry again trying to backhand it in. A weak attempt, but it does the job as the Avalanche make a change. They're all stopped there by Eric Johnson. Jan Heda has got Hall on him. Hall on the steal. Just off the end of his stick. And then Hall fights off Johnson. Out in front. Great play by Hall to set up Nugent Hopkins. Number four does the work. Nugent Hopkins finishes it off. It's two to one for the Oilers. So what an effort here by Taylor Hall. And Ryan Nugent Hopkins has been a thief in this second period. He stole about four pucks already. He did Previously to this goal, he was all over, but it's Taylor Hall with that long stick, keeps his feet moving, stays on this puck, little bump on Johnson. Looks like he's going to pass, but eventually he finds Nugent Hopkins' back door, who drives to the net and taps it home. So great effort by Hall. Has a goal already in this game, feeds Nugent Hopkins there and take the 2-1 lead. Two points each for Ryan Nugent Hopkins and Taylor Hall. Taylor Hall now has the team lead in points. He's got 30 on the season as he picks up his 17th assist of the year. And that one was pure 
Lou Collar, Louie. Nothing first overall about that one. And I think that's the best improvement in all three of these guys' games. Everly, Nugent, Hopkins, and Hall is the fact that they're working harder to get pucks back. And for Taylor Hall, he's so strong, he's fast, he has that long stick. And you saw him use all of it there to steal that puck. And then what a nice little pass he made to Ryan Nugent Hopkins, so showing some touch. We knew we were going to see a lot of Nugent Hopkins in this period after Sam Gagne being kicked out for the five-minute cross-checking major. So down to three centermen, Nugent Hopkins is going to have his work cut out for him tonight, but so will Taylor Hall, who's got iron lungs that can handle some ice time. <laughs> his ninth goal of the season for number 93. And his ninth points and tenth points in 11 games career against the Avalanche in the top line. Loves playing this Avalanche team. They're probably sorry they're out of the division. Everly with it now. It gets turned aside. P.A. Parento. Landis gone. Fires a shot. Dubnik makes the save. He is Stastny right there in his face. Well, we get another winner in our score and win. Kevin King. Kellendorfer of Sherwood Park, Swift Free Club Card, the Apple Safeway, and Christy Crackers. You have won the Lagostina 10 piece stainless steel cookware set. Congratulations, Kevin, on the goal by Ryan Nugent Hopkins. That came at 12 10 of the second period. The Oilers with 13 shots, the Colorado Avalanche with 25. Mitchell and Smith. And this face-off, and the Oilers get control. Hemsky to Petrie. Petrie to Gordon. He tips that puck in. Barlamov stops it up behind the net. He'll play it around the boards himself. Petrie is waiting for it. It gets by him, though, to Mitchell. Good backtrack there by Gordon. Now on the near side, Corey Sarich. He gave it away to Alex Hemsky. Got another chance, and this time he completes the pass to Max Talbot. We're seeing something a little bit different here in the second period. A little more pressure with the forwards of Edmonton. Mitchell shot. Stopped by Dubnik. McGinn circles the net. Then he lost it. And Andrew Ferris picks it up. He'll give it to Ryan Smith. Smith to Boyd Gordon. Boyd Gordon just shoots that puck in as that line heads off on a change. Under six and a half minutes to go in the period. And the fourth line giving an opportunity now against the fourth line of the Colorado Avalanche. Larson gets that puck to Jones. Jones lost it to Cleach. McLeod going after it, but it is Belloff who sends it around the boards for Gazdick. Kept in by Marc-Andre Cleach. Flipped that puck high for Big Bordalo. Belloff knocked down McLeod at the side of the net. And now Larson doing a good job against Bordalo. Does he give away about 100 pounds? Here's Barry from the point. Let's it go. That one's blocked by Gazdick. Bordalo behind the net. Lays it out in front, but there is Gazdick intercepting the pass intended for Marc-Andre Cliche. A race for it. Nate Ginnon got there ahead of Jones. Now an opportunity for McLeod. Wrist shot. Dubnik the save. He'll hang on to it. No rebound. The Oilers have retaken the lead, and it's Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Safeway's featured participating product for tonight's hockey game is... Christy Crackers. Meanwhile, the Goals for Heroes program is proudly sponsored by Synovus for every Oilers goal this season. Synovus will donate $400 to Valor Place Military Family Support House. To date, the Oilers have scored 95 goals for a total of $38,000. I've got two here so far. Yakupov and Perron now. The Oilers. Devin Dubnik has faced 27 shots, Louis, but his teammates have helped out. They've contributed 17 block shots. Yeah, it just goes to show you how many pucks the Avalanche are attempting to throw to the net. And no question the game plan early to get it there. Duchesne with a head of steam against Justin Schultz. Button hook. There's a shot right out in front. And a goal by Ryan O'Reilly. Duchesne to McKinnon. O'Reilly ties the game at two. And here's that quick rush once again by the Avalanche. Nice little pass here by McKinnon. Backhand through the seam. Right to Duchesne, who looks like he's out of the play. Doesn't really have anything, but he just kind of does a little button hook. And if you watch, the pinch here deep. No forwards really coming back aggressively. And once they do, everybody's focused on Duchesne. Looking his way, he finds 
McKinnon, who wisely one touches it, pass right over to O'Reilly, who's not going to miss from there. What a pass, two of them on that play by McKinnon. And they tie the game 2-2. Ryan O'Reilly's now got 11 goals on the season. And Nathan McKinnon, the rookie who came in at number two in rookie points, has got 20 points. Pro Hockey Life, the ultimate hockey megastore. And there is a look at Ryan O'Reilly. Four points in his last five games. And the stars of both teams, Louis, are showing their stuff tonight. Ryan O'Reilly, a goal, but Matt Duchesne's got two points. Taylor Hall's got two points. Ryan Nugent Hopkins has got a couple. Hall's got the puck right now. Hall goes cross sites. The pass was behind Everly, so it's an offside call at the Avalanche Blue Line. It's funny, you know, when you look at the the way that the Oilers have played in the last five games against the Colorado Avalanche, we kind of expected it to be one of those games again where it wasn't a low scoring game. We're only 2 2 right now after almost two periods, so it has been a little bit more of a defensive game. Taylor Hall leads the way of all Oilers in the last five with 12 points. But talking with young Nathan McKinnon this morning, he said, you know, I don't really want it to be a roll tight game, one nothing or 1-1. One, one. I want some points, too. I want to get on the board. Well, we got on the board there, and that's that junior mentality wanting to put some points up. That's what he's known for. That's what he wants to do. But, boy, he's a good player. Backhand by Gordon. Marlamov just got a piece of it. Gordon's got the puck again. Dallas Hamsky. Hamsky back to the point. Larson looking for Bella. Bella. Pokes it behind the net for Smith. Gordon there again against John Mitchell. Ryan Smith weighs his options. Smith, will he come around for the wraparound? Which side he'll try? On the glove side, he gets stopped. But Boyd Gordon against Tyson Berry keeps the puck alive. Smith's got it again. Ryan Smith from the corner, leaves it behind the net. Hemsky going after it. Nate Ginnon gets there first, plays it along the boards. And it comes right him again he'll give it to Mitchell almost had his pocket pick and he eventually did by Lander flip down right on to Devin Dubnik and he's not going to take any chances with Max Talbot right on the doorstep wise decision by Dubnik the Avalanche have been really aggressive in this game and that was part of the game plan for Patrick Waugh and the Avalanche to get pucks in behind the defense of Edmonton, establish that cycle. One of the faster teams in the National Hockey League, both of these teams in this game tonight are fast teams. The Avalanche have that quick attack as well. But he feels, Patrick Waugh does, that their best game is when they cycle it down low, they work off the cycle, and they generate their chances from there. When they open up, they've seen what can happen against the Edmonton Oilers. Not too sure if they want to do that. Their scoring line is out there now against the fourth line. The Oilers will try and get this puck out and get a change in. But it is Anton Lander who's going to lead the rush. Drop pass for Hall with a quick shot that was blocked. O'Reilly chops it around the board. And it's picked up there. Outlet pass for Duchesne from Eric Johnson. Doesn't work. The Schultz is combined to prevent that. And it's Justin Schultz with under three minutes to go in the period. A pass for Lander broken up by O'Reilly. But Jones carries on. Ryan Jones trying to get it to Hall. Justin Schultz keeps it in. Hall with it. He gets checked by Nathan McKinnon. The puck puck. Down into neutral ice. And here is Nick Schultz waiting for that change to happen. And snapped his stick. And the Avalanche bring it in. O'Reilly. For Bordalo. Broken up there by Veron. Pass for Yakupov. He had to knock that one down. Now Jeff Petrie retreats into his own zone. And a penalty coming up. Bordalo is going to go to the penalty box as he knocked down David Perron. And now Devin Dubnik will be able to get to the bench. And six attackers for the Oilers as their first power play of this game awaits. Ference moving in. Ference centering pass for Nugent Hopkins off Benoit. Touched by Ginnon. And with 2.03 to go in the period, the Oilers get the power play as the big man, Louis, is headed to the penalty box. Yeah, he is a big human being, no question about that. But he gets tangled up with David Perron here coming across. That reach out right there, and then the leg coming from behind. No question, this is a penalty on Patrick Bordalo, who, you know, has played a really good game here for the Avalanche. The fourth line's been physical. They've gotten pucks in deep. I mean, he's one of the toughest customers around, but... I think even he, after watching that, I know he's shaking his head, but he's got to know that he, he took him down. And 
we'll go to the Sinbin for a little while. Oilers were 0 for 2 in that game Tuesday against Los Angeles, but they were 3 for 7 against Colorado on December the 5th. And they get their first chance. Nugent Hopkins wins that draw back to Everly. Justin Schultz goes cross ice. Nugent Hopkins sets up, gives it to Hall. Perron's out in front. Hall, Nugent Hopkins, back up top, Schultz, Justin Schultz to Nugent Hopkins, he throws it towards the net, Barlamov the save, rebound for Everly, covered up there eventually by Simeon Barlamov. Boy, I don't know how Jordan Everly got this backhand the way, but he did, and it almost snuck through as Barlamov does a good job to get back across and make the save for Nugent Hopkins, that little zinger off the half wall right there, one hand that just kind of chips it towards the net, it doesn't look like it has too much life in it, but if you look at the angle that it's taking, it kind of bounces off the body pad and then drops down on Varlama. Schultz, pass intercepted by Kleesh. Kleesh, centering pass, Talbot scores! A short-handed goal. The eighth that the Oilers have given up this season. Marc-Andre Kleesh and Max Talbot combined to give Colorado a 3-2 lead. Well, just good penalty killing here by the Avalanche. And for Jordan Everly, just a little dish over to Schultz. And the cross seam pass by Schultz coming back the other way is picked off by Kleesh, who's known for that good defensive role and penalty killing abilities. And he just reads it, picks it off. Two on one, perfect pass to Talbot. Right through Schultz, who goes to the back end, Talbot does, and slips it cross grain for the goal on a 3-2 lead. Max Talbot has got four goals on the season, three of them in a Colorado uniform. Remember, he got traded in October from Philadelphia for Steve Downing. The Oilers still have a minute and 13 of power play time. And an opportunity now for Mitchell shorthanded. John Mitchell moving in. Here's Mitchell stopped by Dubnik. The net comes flying off the moorings. Mitchell looking for a penalty, he's not going to get one. I kind of thought there was going to be a call there too, just from my first take on a driving in. Boy, did he ever show a burst of speed here that I didn't know that he had. But if you watch him, he kind of protects the puck, leans that left leg out. And a little can opener there by Larson, who reached in, lifts the stick. You know, I think the fact that he went right for the shaft of the stick and lifted it and didn't interfere too much with the hands of... And that's exactly what the referee was signaling yeah. when he's, he was talking to John Mitchell. the fact that he didn't get called there. So a good job by Larson not to reach in and touch hands. He gets all stick and gets away with it on a great chance by Mitchell. Shorthanded again. One. Less than a minute to go in the period. And under a minute of power play time remaining for the Oilers. Their first 15 power play goals on the road for the Oilers. Look at Everly flying across the blue line. Jordan Everly back to the point. But that one's intercepted by Cleach. He and Talbot are back out there. As for Perron, doesn't work. Barlama will leave it there. And he runs into Nate Ginn. And both of those guys are going to scramble as they continue to do a little tugging. Nugent Hopkins brings it in. And offside is Jordan Eberle. A lot of gamesmanship down there going on right now. And for David Perron, always in the middle and the thick of things, it seems, for the Edmonton Oilers. Great wheels by Jordan Eberle in that last rush. Just coming in under steam. Good job by Ganin to kind of head him off, not allow him to take that puck like he likes to on the back end of the net. And eventually good penalty killing by the Avalanche to work it out of the zone again. Two shots so far for the Oilers on this power play. That has 20 seconds left in it. As Petrie gets stopped there by the veteran Corey Saric. Saric and Benoit on the blue line as Hemsky brings it in. Alish Hemsky. He's got Gordon in front of the net, plays it back to Larson at the point, gets it back again. Now he'll move in, and then lost it on the dribble. Hemsky's got it back again. Penalty is over as he lets the shot go. That hits Saric right at the horn. And the Colorado Avalanche, Louis, do all their damage offensively in this second period. Yeah, they do all three goals by the Avalanche in the second. One power play, one even, and one short-handed goal. But here's a last chance by Hemsky as he decides just to shoot a big, juicy rebound. Comes right through, and Jeff Petrie pinching down has a chance at the, the shot. 
right at the buzzer, but at the time had elapsed. So a 3-2 lead, a reversal by the Colorado Avalanche carrying it over into the third period. We'll take a break here for the Pepsi Center. When we come back, it is Hockey Central time right after this. You brought up an interesting point, Louie, when we were talking in between this period. The top line will start this period, but you're looking for someone else other than the top line to grab hold of this game offensively for the Oilers. Well, that's what I was thinking, you know, coming into it. You've seen some some goals scored by different lines by the Colorado Avalanche. The big players have come to play, no question about that. But that shorthanded goal by Talbot from Cleish, for the Oilers are going to need somebody to chip in with some offense as well, I think, in this game. Well, Hayda and Johnson out there to start the period because the Oilers have their top line out, and it's been Paul Stastny's line along with Landis Cog and P.A. Parento who have gone head-to-head -head with the big line. As we take a look at Paul Stastny, a guy that uh, five times in his career has had 20 goals, Louis, and his next game will be his 500 in the National Hockey League. Yeah, 499 for him tonight. And, you know, obviously got that little battle with Gagne that got Gagne ejected. He caught Gagne with a high stick and then received a pretty vicious cross check. But you look at the numbers that he's put up in almost 500 games, pretty good. For him, almost a point a game guy. Landis Kaga, Parento, and there is Nick Schultz with a blocked shot. Parento's got it again. He'll go cross ice, but he could not find Eric Johnson as Everly got a piece of that pass. Paul Stastny's dad was pretty good, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the greats, actually. Peter the Great. He was a 200-foot player as well. Ryan Smith. Chips it in against Sarich. Around the boards it goes. Here is O'Reilly waiting for it. Ryan O'Reilly. Nathan McKinnon up the middle for Duchesne. Duchesne trying to split the defense, but a great defensive play there by Jeff Petrie. And we have seen that back in Petrie's game. Yeah, no question. What a good read there. And they double team Duchesne knowing that he's so quick coming through the ice with the puck. He can do wondrous things. So Jeff Petrie recognized that, pounces on him, and gets that stick in there. Ferentz to an open wing and slowly down the ice, and it's Sarich who comes up with it. Corey Sarich flipped that pass. It was too far for John Mitchell. Picked up by Larson. He'll give it to Yakupov, backhanding it in. Stopped by Andre Benoit. His second chance for Benoit does get it to Jamie McGinn. He finds Mitchell. John Mitchell moving in. A wrist shot, and that one caught some iron. Dubnik. Pops it in behind the net. Evan Dubnik will play it himself off the glass for Yakupov. Neil Yakupov trying to pitchfork that thing out of here. And finally, it's sent down the ice by Nugent Hopkins. And no icing. That will allow the change. Ryan Nugent Hopkins doing double duty in the absence of Sam Gagne, who was given a 5 and a 10 in that first period. As Louis mentioned for the cross check on Paul Stastny. Lander hustles after it. Gaznik follows up. In and steals it, but there's Ryan Jones to get it back again to Gazdick. Luke Gazdick with a shot, and that one ends up behind the net. Here is Justin Schultz. Pitching in, Schultz circling the net. Knocked down by Cleish. The puck comes to the middle, and there is Tyson Berry to pick it off. Berry. Patrick Bordalo. Bordalo. Separated from the puck by Ryan Jones. Jones drops it back for Nick Schultz. The shot's much closer in that second period as Louis pointed out 13-10 17-5 in the first period it stands now at 32-15 it was 35-28 the last time these teams met in favor of the Colorado Avalanche yeah they like to put pucks in that they did certainly do that early in this game it was pretty remarkable actually that Edmonton had the one nothing lead coming out of the first period the way the Avalanche played great saves by Devin Dubik 17 exactly and they've carried that forward throughout this game, continuing to get pucks to him, and it paid off in the second period with three goals. The Oilers gave up 40 shots in the game against Los Angeles on Tuesday. Ferentz to Petrie. Jeff Petrie. Everly tips it in. Barlamov stops it, and he will give it to Andre Benoit. To the middle for Duchesne off the end of his stick, and Petrie is there. Jeff Petrie. Retreats into his own zone and then uses the glass and gets that puck down the ice. Benoit against Gordon. The puck goes up high and caught a piece of the netting. And we get a whistle. 
Carey Price has his sight set. First goal, then the cup. We go one-on-one -on -one with Montreal's star goalie in the new issue of Sportsnet Magazine. Subscribe now at sportsnet.ca slash magazine. Well, Kevin, we talked about Jeff Petrie and how he recognized that Matt Duchesne had a whole lot of speed, tr speed trying to go around Andrew Farron. So they double team him, gets his long stick in there, and like the scorpion, <laughs> pokes it off the stick. Averaging uh, just over 21 and a half minutes a game is Jeff Petrie. He's got seven points so far in the season. Leads the club in hits. He's closing in on 100 hits. Yeah, and that's that aspect of his game that the coaching staff had wanted him to improve on, the physical nature, and he is doing that so far. Anton Lander wins the draw. Lander out there with Yakupov and Perron as Belov rips it in. The owners will have to retreat, and that will allow Sarich to bring it out unmolested. Shoots it in. Devin Dubnik waits for it there. Fell off. Being watched by Duchesne. Pass intercepted by O'Reilly. Fell off. Gets it back again. Duchesne's all over him. Matt Duchesne tied up there by Belloff as the puck goes over top of Andre Benoit. The Oilers want to get a change in. They'll get their big line out there. And the forecheck, Kevin, of the Avalanche really giving the defense of Edmonton fits right now. Full possession of a puck right there and just thrown into an area that the Avalanche win the puck back. Ryan Nugent Hopkins with it now. Nugent Hopkins to Justin Schultz. Schultz with a sharp angle shot. Everly looking for the rebound. Everly another shot. That one's up on the far side. Tyson Berry chops at it. Now Ginnon tries. Can't get it by Hall. Hall takes a hit from Mitchell. Gets it to Nugent Hopkins. His shot was stopped by Ginnon. Tyson Berry will give it to Nate Ginnon. It was a healthy scratch in the last game for the first time this season. Good job by Justin Schultz to keep that puck in. Now a race for it, and Schultz is there again. Justin Schultz, another sharp angle shot. The rebound for Nugent Hopkins. Hopkins in the corner, plays it back to the point. Nick Schultz has it now. Nick Schultz goes cross ice. Justin Schultz was calling for it. Ryan Smith tied up behind the net, separated from the puck by Tyson Berry. But the Oilers keeping the avalanche trapped in their own zone and Simeon Varlamov recognizes and he holds on to it. If you're looking for commercial insurance or risk management services, contact us to see what the power of insight can do for you. Shop and swipe your club card at Safeway today and you could be our next lucky winner. Watch future Sportsnet telecasts. You could win a week of unlimited luxury at Dreams Resorts and Spas courtesy of redtag.ca. Face-off win for Boyd Gordon, and it's shot by Alex Hemsky. Hemsky on the move, gets it to Petrie. Here's Petrie with a shot right out in front. He tried to get it to Boyd Gordon for the deflection. The Oilers putting back-to-back -back shifts here that have hemmed up the Colorado Avalanche. Landis God works his way in. There is Hemsky backtracking. Landis God gives him a bump, separates him from his stick. Hemsky's got it back. From the corner, Alex Hemsky flips it high, gets it out to center. Ryan Smith trying to get that puck to settle down as the Oilers get a change in. Eric Johnson dumps it into the corner, and it's coming back. Rogers, Oilers hockey right here. Outstanding play, outstanding results is brought to you by Remax. Outstanding agents, outstanding results. Well, it's the first goal of the game, and it's by Taylor Hall. Good defensive play by him to get back, lodge the puck to Jeff Petrie, and then it's Nugent Hopkins that just gives it to Petrie. Off the wall to Taylor Hall with speed, and he just zings it home for his 13th of the year. No chance for Varlamov on that goal there, but a perfect pass by Petrie off the wall. And for Taylor Hall, out of the gates in a hurry in this one as well. Also has picked up an assist in this game. Came in without a goal in his last four. And Taylor Hall, 200th career game on Tuesday in Los Angeles. Yeah, he did. You look at his body of work over those 200 games. So not too shabby when you break it down over the first 100 to the second 100. He's getting progressively better each and every year. And obviously was top 10 in scoring last year in the National Hockey League. And is playing at a point per game pace this year. And he's got two points on the night, and he has the team lead in points. 
He's got 30 on the season, one more than Jordan Everly. Going to take a draw, too. Out there with Everly and Nugent Hopkins from the faceoff. It comes to P.A. Parento. Parento, Landis Cog, and Stastnik. The forward line as Parento tries to squeeze by Larson. Everly on the near side, checked by Benoit. Back to the point. There is Landis Cog's shot blocker saved by Devin Dubnik. Parento gave it away to Schultz, and Schultz returned the favor to Landis Cog. Then Nugent Hopkins stole it. And Hall comes up with it. He and Everly start away. Nice pass to Everly to Nugent Hopkins. Nugent Hopkins trying to get it back to Everly. Now to the near side. Paul Stastny will pick it up. Paul Stastny can't get it out. Schultz throws it towards the net. Stick save. Arlamov. Hall on the near side. Gets a little help from Nugent Hopkins. Pushes it to the corner. Everly is there. He'll get it to Hall. Taylor Hall. Works his way back to the blue line. One-time shot coming from Schultz, and that one whistles wide. Benoit plays it off the boards and down the ice. But we'll be back in Colorado territory on the icing call. Boy Gordon. Alex Hamsky, Ryan Smith out there now with Petrie and Ferentz. 12-11 to go in regulation time. 33-22. The shots favor the Colorado Avalanche, who have a 3-2 lead. It was Max Talbot's shorthanded goal. Hamsky with a backhand as he drives the net, gets knocked down. That's what Alex Hamsky does. I like the fact that he took it all the way to the net here. Didn't look the pass, tried to jam it through Varlamov and had to pay a price to do it. Ferentz sets up behind his own net as Hemsky comes back. Boyd Gordon. Across the blue line. Boyd Gordon with a great move. Here's Boyd Gordon with a backhand. Varlama makes the save as Nate Ginnon took down Boyd Gordon. So both Hemsky and Gordon driving the net. Is that 27 or 87 <laughs> for Boyd Gordon? He just split the D, went right down the middle and got a good chance on net. Boyd Gordon, he's three off a career high. He's got five goals on the season. John Mitchell with it now. Mitchell outside of Petrie. Mitchell behind the net. Again in front. Back to the point. Here's Johnson shot. That one tipped wide. David Perron. To Nail Yakupov. To Taylor Hall. Taylor Hall chips it in. He's going to head off. Yakupov with Perron and Nugent Hopkins. Ryan Newton Hopkins. Stolen by Duchesne. Duchesne. And it deflects off the stick of Schultz and up into the netting. Good job by Nick Schultz to stay up on that play and not back right in. So it keeps his gap nice and strong and is able to deflect it off the glass. Here's his play off the face off by Hemsky. Just drives it wide. Just tries to go right into the, the melee and jam at home. And then Boyd Gordon doing his best Sidney Crosby impression as he splits it. He goes to the backhand. And good job by Ganin to stay with him and deny him of getting a real high quality chance. And you see that uh, that puck he took in warm up. Uh, cut over his eye. Yeah. Jordan Everly with it now. Everly. To Ryan Jones and that is offside. Well, look at that. Uh, that's got to be the the other thing about that one Louis is you don't expect it. He just warming up and, and Neil Yakupov took a shot that went off the crossbar and caught him right there. Yeah, and he was skating forward as well, so it was also the puck coming back off the crossbar, but his speed going forward as well. Could have been a lot worse, he said. You know, it caught him in a, in a real sensitive area. Could have been a little bit lower. Could have been a nose, teeth. So, I mean, he was actually pretty pretty grateful to get out of it with a few zips. Tough customer. But no shield for Boyd Gordon. 10-20 left to go in regulation time. The owners trying to snap a four-game losing streak by beating Colorado for the fifth straight time. Duchesne shot, and Dubnik has to be sharp. Matt Duchesne with two points on the night, both in the form of assists. And that was one puck that just didn't get out of the zone. It was Matt Duchesne on the counteract again as he just picked it up, wheeled, get the feet moving. So hard to control Matt Duchesne when he gets ahead of steam, and he can fire it. Pass me, the land is gone. He'll chip it in. Belloff takes a look, takes a bump from Landis Cog. Down the near side. Anton Lander flips it out. Nate Ginnon is right there. 
to get it back in, but Parento gets trapped in the zone. He's offside. Matt Duchesne leads this team in goals, and he stays at 15 thanks to Devin Dubnik. BPL English Soccer sees second place Liverpool hosting Cardiff City at 5.30 a.m. Mountain Saturday morning on Sportsnet West Pacific East and Ontario. Then at 7.30 a.m. Mountain on the same channels, Aston Villa visits Stoke City. Meanwhile on Sportsnet World, Hull City with only one road win and eight tries visits West Brom also at 7.30 a.m. Mountain. Nine and a half minutes to go here in regulation time. And once again, Louis... The top line up there for the owners, trying to be a difference maker. Nugent Hopkins from the corner for Everly. Hall. And the front of the net, here comes Petrie, shot deflected just wide. Hall goes after it. Taylor Hall dances out in front, trying to get a shot away against Corey Sarich. Sarich ends up knocking him down as Parento chips it in. He'll chase it against Ferentz. Ferentz takes him hard into the boards, knocks him down. Box underneath them, still alive. Now it squirts loose, and Petrie will pick it up. Jeff Petrie eludes Landeskog. Petrie to Eberle. Eberle drops it back to the corner. But it was Johnson who was picking it up. And Perron trying to get it free to Schultz. Schultz. Justin Schultz off the bench is Yakupov. Here is Yakupov. Right out in front, begging away was Jones. Ryan O'Reilly relieves the pressure, gets the puck down the ice. Justin Schultz brings it right back in. He'll chip and chase himself. Harlamov pushes it to the corner. Ryan Jones on the intercept for Yakupov. Bumped into by Kleesh. Yakupov fights him off from one knee trying to make a pass. He battles back. And finally it's worked out to McLeod. Tell you some vigorous work down low by the Avalanche. Every time it gets down to the corners, good defending. Once on Taylor Hall by Sarge. And right there you saw Yakupov have to contend with two avalanche players for that loose puck they're tightening up ship in the defensive zone ryan smith nice pass to the middle for hemsky alice hemsky let a shot go came to smith the deflection goes just wide alice hemsky picks it up here is hemsky to Belloff, lets the shot go and his stick explodes bad timing jamie mcginn trapped along the boards ryan smith knocked him down but he did knock the puck out Anton Belov gets a new stick. Gets to the red line, dumps it in. Barlamov will stop it there. Leave it for Ginnon. Around the boards for Max Talbot. Talbot, three on two with Mitchell. And McGinn lets the shot go. And Dubnik the save, and then a shot by Talbot from his knees goes wide. Hall to Eberle. Back the other way come the Oilers. Eberle to Nugent Hopkins. Taken there by Sarich. He got it by Hall. Nifty little move for the veteran. Ferentz throws it towards the net. Varlama makes the save with Hall there. Hangs on. Let's take a look at the game review brought to you by The Brick. Nobody beats The Brick for furniture, mattresses, appliances, and big screen TVs. Taylor Hall involved in both goals tonight. A goal and assist for six points in his last two games versus the Colorado Avalanche. Then the eighth shorthanded goal against for Edmonton is the go-ahead goal right now. The most in the NHL they've given up this year. And for the Avalanche, they've come out right from the get-go, Kevin, with 35 shots on goal, 20 that have been blocked as well. So their mentality is shoot until it goes in, and they've gotten three by Dubnik so far. Talbot's short-handed goal, just the second shorty for the Colorado Avalanche this year. McKinnon tipped it to the middle. David Perron backhands that puck in. Sarich takes a hit from Yakupov as that puck goes out of play. Corey Sarich has been a pretty solid defender here in this last little bit here and is going to see a lot of Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Jordan Eberle, and Hall. And here Nell Yakupov giving him a little shot as well on that forecheck. But a big defensive-minded defenseman for the Avalanche has seen a lot of games approaching 1,000. And he's done well the last couple of shifts to shut them down. Ryan Wilson is still trying to work himself back in. He missed 16 games with a back problem and does not dress for the fourth straight game. And, of course, Alex Tange remains out with a knee injury. Petrie, a shot deflected high and wide. Johnson chops it out. Duchesne to the middle it goes. Here comes McKinnon. McKinnon slides it. 
to Ryan O'Reilly, but O'Reilly wasn't up to able to get it. That was just a anticipation by McKinnon, but he showed that deceptive speed that he does have. When he wants to put in an eye gear, he can take off. Well, he was hoping for a pond hockey game. <laughs> kind of got a little bit. A little bit. He's gotten on the scoreboard. John Mitchell, meantime, was talking about how important it is to be tight defensively. That's the difference between a veteran and a youngster. Well, you know, for Patrick Wong, obviously dealing with some young athletes here in this Colorado Avalanche team. For Nathan McKinnon, you know, that's the one thing that he did say. Teams in the NHL, for him compared to Junior, when they get a lead, they shut it down. They do not allow you to get too many chances. And now the Avalanche are trying to play that part with a one-goal lead here late in the period. Five minutes, 51 seconds to go in regulation time. Philip Larson. Looks up the middle, gets it to Hemsky in full flight. Here comes Alex Hemsky. Alex Hemsky around Tyson Berry right out in front. It comes opportunity for Smith, and it slides it just wide on the backhand. This line has had its chances in the third period. Gordon, Smith, and Hemsky. And it's just old-fashioned driving it to the blue paint. All three of them, and Ryan Smith has had a couple dandy chances. As Louie mentioned, hard hat time for this line as they try and tie the game. The play of the game is brought to you by Rogers, bringing fans the fastest speeds in more places. Rogers, LTE. Well, it stands as the go-ahead goal, and it was Max Talbot's 16th shorthanded goal of his career, and the eighth given up by the Edmonton Oilers this year, most in the National Hockey League. Great pass by Cleese, just to pick it off the pass by Schultz, find Talbot driving to the net, a nice backhand move by Talbot. Cross grain behind Devin Dubin for a 3-2 lead. His fourth goal of the year is the difference right now with five minutes and 25 seconds left to go in regulation time. It has been the Stastny line against the Nugent Hopkins line all night. Sarich ties up Everly, but Hall lost an edge. Parento trying to get it out and finally does. Everly, neat little pass. Back to this man, Philip Larson. Larson to Nugent Hopkins. Nugent Hopkins gets stopped at center by Parento, but there is Larson to come and get the puck. Justin Schultz. Nugent Hopkins to Hall. Everly. Jordan Everly. Backhand. Big chance in front, and it's cleared down the ice. Jordan Everly, the only member of the big three not to be on the board yet. Boy, that was a nice move by him there. Mitchell with a puck now. Mitchell with a nice move. Right out in front for Talbot. Jamie McGinn, off the end of his stick. Here's McGinn, throws it in behind the net. Talbot waiting for it. He's got Mitchell out in front. Larson checked him. Talbot to Mitchell. John Mitchell from behind the net. Here is Eric Johnson's shot, and he whistled that one wide, and that will chase Jan Hayda back into his own zone. Just over four minutes of regulation time remaining. Anton Lander to Jeff Petrie to Anton Belloff. Belloff can't get it by. Talbot moving in with Mitchell. Two on one. Here's Mitchell with a shot. And Devin Dubnik makes the save and keeps it a 3-2 game. Well, ends at both, uh, chances at both ends here, Kevin, and real high-quality ones at that. Nice little move here by Everly. Justin Schultz has been jumping in the whole game, but watch Barlamov just come across, follow Everly the whole way, and stuff him, leaves everybody else to his defenseman and makes a big save. It's Mitchell with a nice pickoff, and he finds a spot to get to the hole after giving it to the wide wing and gets a real good shot away. Not quite the shot he wanted to, but Dubna comes up with a good save as well. 8-6 for the order shots in this period. 36-25 overall. 37 overall, and that puck ends up going high. Three and a half minutes to go in regulation time. Puck throws it along the near side wall. And from the scrum, the puck comes loose. Devin Dubnik gets it to settle down. Ryan Smith trying to backhand it out, and he does get it by. An opportunity now for Nugent Hopkins. Out in front. Here is Ryan Smith. Ryan Smith, Boyd Gordon. Everly, good job to keep it in. Jordan Everly couldn't get the shot away on a nice defensive play by Tyson Berry. Hall keeps it in on the far side. Here is Hall. 
to Nugent Hopkins. His shot, glove save. Simeon Varlamov as Philip Larson was cruising through. This perfectly preserved uniform came to us via a generous donation from our champion's wife. Pick your winners today with pools. BMO Raptors basketball sees Toronto visiting the Dallas Mavericks tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. Mountain on Sportsnet 1. The Mavs very impressive at home this season with an 11-2 record. No natural center on this line. It is Baron, Hamsky, and Yakupov. Yakupov lets a shot go, and it does eventually work its way through to Varlamov as Andre Benoit blocked it a little bit. But there is David Baron, Louis, getting an opportunity at center right now with Hemsky and Yakupov. Well, we've seen him battle in the blue paint a lot in this game. He wants to battle a little bit in the red paint as well. It was a nice little face-off win there as Yakupov was able to pick it up. And I like the fact that he was looking to get it to the net as Perron was heading that way as well. Down to 2.44 in the clock. The Oilers are getting a little desperate here. They're going to have to generate some chances. Mitchell won that draw. Schultz hammers the puck in. Larson going after it. Johnson chopped at it. Larson to Yakupov. Nail Yakupov swings it out in front for Perron. David Perron now. Perron lets that shot go. Here's a backhand from Yakupov. Oilers with all kinds of pressure. Alex Hemsky. David Perron snaps a shot. Desperate mode as Johnson got a piece of it on the block. Hemsky keeps it in. Alex Hemsky now against Mitchell and Mitchell. Forces him outside the blue line, and the Colorado Avalanche make a change as Alex Hemsky winds up, comes across the blue line, lets the shot go for Lomov the save, and he'll cover up as Hayda threw Hemsky into the boards, and Alex Hemsky, a tough night for him, just getting up now. He's been banged around a lot, but I'll tell you what, Alex Hemsky has continued to get up, move the feet, and drive pucks to the net, and good defensive play by Mitchell a couple of times to really harass him, not allow him to take the puck to the net. Good stick here with the reach by Mitchell, who's been good defensively all night long. And then Hemsky wound it up and gets a shot through traffic. And a timeout being called here with 1.53 on the clock. I wouldn't be surprised if Devin Dubnik is going to stay on the bench for the extra attacker now. Full court press. Gives us a chance to find out what's coming up on Connected. George Popolis and Brenda Dunlop have the desk. Guys, what's coming up? We look forward to that, a minute 53 in regulation time left. As Louie mentioned, the Oilers have called a timeout. Devin Dubnik is on the bench. Taylor Hall, David Perron, Jordan Eberling, Boyd Gordon, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, and Justin Schultz. And it will be Boyd Gordon who will take this draw against Paul Stastny. From the faceoff, Gordon wins it. Nugent Hopkins, wrist shot high over top of the net. Justin Schultz to Boyd Gordon, trying to get it to Hall. Instead, it's sent down the ice, and this is going to be an icing call. Ooh, that was <laughs> one and two overall in that race there. And Nugent Hopkins had to Hopkins had to really get on his horse to beat Landeskog back for this puck. So a good rim around the boards to get it down. Watch just put it into high gear, put the head down. And that's that new rule right there. They felt, you know what, he's going to get there. And I didn't want to see that collision. Gordon wins the draw again. Nugent Hopkins around the boards for Everly on the far side. Gordon checked by Stastny. Gets it to Perron to Everly. Everly back to the point. Nugent Hopkins checked by Landis Cog. Look at Nugent Hopkins, kept it in briefly and now race for it. Parento's got an empty net. P.A. Parento missed it. A minute 10 remaining. Now an opportunity for Landis Cog and he missed. Wow. The owner's still alive. A minute to go in regulation time. Nugent Hopkins to Eberly to Hall. Hopped over his stick. He'll play it behind the net. Hemsky waiting for it. Comes around to the near side. 
Justin Schultz gets it to Perron. Perron throws it towards the cage and missed on the far side. Nugent Hopkins is there. He'll chop it in behind the net for Hemsky. Tied up there by Benoit. Alex Hemsky. Nugent Hopkins shot, but Love off the save with Perron and Hall right there. He gets the whistle. You got to hand it to Semyon Varlamov, Kevin. He's done a nice job here. Allowed eight goals against December 5th in that 8-2 loss versus Edmonton. And boy, has he redeemed himself in this one. Has made 27 saves. This one here through traffic again. And he holds on to it. Perron tries to sneak in there and agitate him a little bit. But he just kind of steps out, pulls his stick away, and refocuses for the next shot. He's been dialed in tonight. Boyd Gordon against Ryan O'Reilly. Boyd Gordon has won the last two draws. He gets down low, a scramble, controlled by the Avalanche. Hayda sends it around the boards. That goes down the ice with 30 seconds to go. Another icing call. By Colorado Avalanche, Louis trying to win this game six seconds at a time. Yeah, just taking it shift by shift and trying to put pucks around the boards and obviously try and nullify an ice and maybe send someone in for the opener. There's two dynamite chances for the Avalanche to finish this one off. And they weren't able to do that, so now it's still time on the clock and a chance for Edmonton to tie it. Boyd Gordon wins the draw again. Taylor Hall out in front. It comes scramble, and it just got by Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Worked out to center by Max Talbot. Boyd Gordon trying to get it back in. Ten seconds to go. The net empty for the orders. Nugent Hopkins has to wait, and Duchesne's got an empty cage. Duchesne will finish this one off. His third point of the night makes it 4-2 Colorado. With not a whole lot of time, Kevin, on the clock. Good battle on the blue line. And hand it to the Avalanche, denying Edmonton the entry. Eventually, it's just stolen by Matt Duchesne, who just rips it away and goes down and tucks it home, ensures that it goes into the net and seals the deal 4-2 for the Avalanche with 1.1 seconds on the clock. The Oilers give up four goals in this game. A power play goal, a shorthanded goal, an even strength goal, and an empty net goal. And they see their losing streak extended to five games as Colorado and Edmonton have split the season series so far. Well, they have and a real violent effort here by the Avalanche. We knew, Kevin, they were going to come out ready to play this game. An embarrassing 8-2 loss December 5th. They came out right in the first period, firing 17 shots on Devin Dubnik. They weren't rewarded, but they carried that over into the second, got three, and in the end finish it off with an open ender for a 4-2 game. They were the best team to start the game, and they finished it off as the best team tonight. These two former Northwest Division rivals will come together one more time April 8th here at the Pepsi Center tonight. The final, the Avalanche 4, the Oilers 2. Rogers Oilers Hockey on Sportsnet. Brought to you by Rogers. Live like never before. By Molson Canadian. Diehard fan and proud partner of the Edmonton Oilers. By Ford, go further. And by the Rexall family of pharmacies.